Well, civil rights activist, lawyer, professor, and TV pundit Maya Wiley is hoping to add New York City mayor to her resume. Wiley served as legal counsel to Mayor Bill de Blasio. She's been inside City Hall, so now she believes that she's the best choice to steer the city through these difficult times. Among her plans for changing New York, investing billions in infrastructure, helping small businesses with grants, and providing financial assistance to families who, who's most in need, especially with uh, caregiving expenses. Maya Wiley joining us now. Nice to have you on Good Day New York. Oh, it's wonderful to be with you both. Thanks for having me. So let's start with crime because I know you talk about it on your social media. Gun violence is up in New York City. What do we do? How do we balance the defund the police and getting crime numbers, you know, crime down? Balance is the perfect word. I mean, what we have to recognize is that we know what brings violence down. It is making it easier to get a job than a gun and making sure our police department focuses on keeping illegal guns out of our city and off our streets. That's a balance. So that means things like making sure that we're creating more summer youth employment for kids in communities that have high rates of gun violence. That means more trauma-informed care. One of the things we don't talk enough about, and I think COVID is making this clearer to folks is trauma actually is a mental health crisis and it actually leads to violence but there are treatments there are interventions and I have a plan that's going to put trauma-informed care in our schools because we know that that brings violence rates down 50 percent and sends graduation rates up 20 percent that's a perfect investment in people in our communities but it also helps our police officers officers focus on what we need them focused on and not the jobs we've been adding on to their list because we haven't been investing in what works and so, I think that makes it better for everyone. So you talk about you know mental challenges no doubt about it everybody and somebody in your family has experienced in, in all of our families has experienced mental challenges but we also know that Thrive which was uh, a big initiative in Mayor de Blasio a billion dollars went unaccounted for. What would you do with Thrive and do you think it made any impact? You know, this is an important conversation because it was absolutely the right thing to do to say we need to invest in mental health services. I mean, we'd have everyone since Tipper Gore trying to get government to invest in mental health as a health issue. Uh, and we've seen it with street homelessness. So what I would do is make sure we were directing our funding to get the right outreach to street homeless. People who are homeless are also the evicted, but the people we're seeing on our streets are people who do suffer from mental illness. And so we have wait, does Thrive stay or do you, do, do you dismantle Thrive or do you do create something else? You create what works. I mean, one of the things we have to understand about Thrive is there were existing programs that got placed with a label called Thrive on them that were good programs. Uh, so part of what we have to do is pull forward all our resources that we should be deploying smartly to where they are needed most. And I'm going to focus first on street homelessness because that's a humanitarian crisis. It's also a public health and a public safety crisis. So let's just talk some more about the homelessness, which is out of proportion in, in this city. I know you've been in contact with the Lucerne that we do have to find some type of shelter. But when you look at all through the city, whether it's a subway system or on the streets, it still is a problem. Problem. So how do you address it? Well, first, you know, let me say, it, it, and I, I am going to address the remarks of Andrew Yang, because one of the things that he said is, you know, cut, not spend the aid money coming from Washington. But here's the thing, you know, you can say maybe starve a cold, but you feed a fever. And we're in a pandemic crisis that with a $5 billion budget deficit, but $6 billion in aid funds coming. And the aid was to deal with things like the fact that we have literally 600,000 people facing eviction. We have literally doubled the number of people, over 2 million people going hungry. Some of those people are working in jobs, but they can't afford the rent. So what we have 
have to recognize when we're looking at things like street homelessness, we have to invest in the outreach and the housing that have support services in them in order to bring us back, in order to stimulate our economy, as well as being compassionate with our people and understanding what we're going through. That's leadership. Unfortunately, Andrew Yang doesn't understand how government works or how we can utilize our resources of government in order to solve problems. And this is no time to say we are going to starve the hungry or ignore the homeless or fail to recognize how the investment actually helps us bring jobs back, makes our lives better. And that's a compassionate leadership that understands how city government works. And that's the mayor I'll be. And leadership within the school system. I know you called for them all to reopen early on, follow the CDC guidelines. You have two children, one child in college now, another in private school, but they have been within the public school system. Yes. I, look, I'm a parent who spent, between my two kids, we've had 15 years in the public school system navigating elementary school, middle school admissions, high school, and I'm grateful for all those opportunities. But I've heard firsthand from both parents, from teachers, from principals, just how devastating, and we've all experienced it, my kids too, how devastating this pandemic has been, how our kids have lost educational time. We've got kids in homeless shelters that didn't have access to the internet. How are they supposed to learn? This is an example of where we have an opportunity to recognize that we have to get more dollars into the classroom. We have to partner with our teachers and our principals, give them room to innovate, uh, bring some joy back into the classroom. You know, one of the things that I saw as a parent was we we were strangling our kids with testing. Uh, we were calling arts and music and, and enrichment when really it was central to not just their joy, but their finding their talents, investing in the kinds of things that improved their education, improved their behavior in many instances, help them manage stress and trauma. So we've got the opportunity now to really get more dollars into the classroom, but also do it in a way that allows more partnership with our parents, with our, with our teachers, with our principals, so that we're doing what works and building on what people see as the possibility for all our kids. And so I do think I, that means yeah, safely. I just wanted to ask you before we, we have to go, um, you speak about funding the classroom, uh, property taxes. We are in bad shape in New York City. Commercial real estate is almost nine, non-existent. 90% of workers are working remotely. Uh, lots of people saying they're not coming back the way they did. As you know, property taxes fund education and sanitation. What are you going to do to get this city started? Because we're in bad shape here. Well, look, we use we have so many resources and so much know-how in the city to bring us back stronger and more fair. So I'm going to spend $10 billion in capital construction. That means building things we need built and fixing things we need fixed, building more affordable housing, help putting $2 billion into fixing public housing, resiliency in, the, in flooding because we have a climate crisis. But all of this will create 100,000 new jobs, and there'll be good jobs. When you put money in people people's pockets, guess what they do with it? They pay the rent. Uh, they go to the neighborhood business. It's stimulative. But the other thing we have to recognize is that we have the opportunity right now to not only have save folks from eviction, but recognize it's a way to save our property owners. So in my eviction moratorium plan, we will subsidize homeowners. We will subsidize landlords with one to five buildings so that they are getting the money to pay the mortgage, to pay the property taxes in exchange for not evicting our people because we can't add to the homeless crisis. But that also brings our dollars back into our coffers. And that's a good thing. And that's that's important to recognize what we've got to do, but also how we can do it. And when you've worked inside City Hall in that very hot kitchen, you know how to cook. Mm. So I'm cooking up a meal for the city. All right. Maya Wiley joining us, uh, New York City candidate for mayor. Good to have you on. Good day. Thank you. Wonderful to be with you. Thank you for having me.